this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're just going to look at um, using uh, generic classes um, and I'm not going to cover everything in this one tutorial we're going to um, take a, a bit of a deeper look at this in the next tutorial and in a future tutorial we're going to look at defining your own generic classes but I just want to introduce the topic here with a really simple example so um, a generic class is a class that um, can work with other objects and you specify what type of object it can work with when you um, instantiate the class when you create objects from the class so uh, let's take a look at an example and if you only learn one thing about generics it really should be how to use the ArrayList class um, in its generic form. Um, so we haven't we haven't looked at ArrayList yet in a series of tutorials. And uh, if you want more information on ArrayList, then if you go to www.caveofprogramming.com, then you can find a whole series of free tutorials on using um, ArrayList and the other members of the Java collections framework which are, it's really important to know that so it's very useful but basically ArrayList just manages an array internally so um, it's like having an array but you don't have to worry about the size of that array and you can add things and remove things from it um, without thinking about the size explicitly now um, I'm going to show you first the old style of doing this so before um, before I think I think it was Java 5 before then um, Java didn't have um, the feature called generics and um, using an array list used to look like this so let's say here before Java I think it was Java 5 so before Java 5 if you wanted an array list you'd say array list uh, list equals new array list like this this is pretty straightforward and I'll add the import there and what you've got now is a object that can store other objects so um, let's take an example let's just add some strings there so I can say list.add um, and I'll just add let's add some fruits so I'll say apple and list.add uh, banana and list.add orange and you get the idea and um, you can um, you can iterate through the list if you want to and actually I'm not going to show you the old style of iterating through the list here because it's a bit cumbersome and I don't want to get too far into lists here but let's say you want to get an item from this list you would now have to say uh, string fruit let's say equals uh, list dot get so it's got a method called get and then you supply the index of the thing you want to get in the list and the index is the indices start numbering at zero so that's zero one and two so let's get the item at index one and you'll notice I've got an error here and that's because get returns um, an object and then you have to downcast the object to the type of thing that you actually want so I'll downcast object to string and then finally I can say sysout fruit and if I run this um, it says banana so that was the old style of doing things but in uh, Java 5 I think it was uh, generics were introduced um, so you have uh, parametrized classes and the idea behind generics is that you can if you have a a class that works with some particular type of object or it could even be two or three or more um, types of distinct objects then you can specify using generics um, you can have type parameters which specify what kind of object you want that class to work with so to take an example here let's say here um, modern style And um, now I create an array list. When I create an array list, I have these diamond brackets here, 
and um, in those brackets I specify the type of thing that I want to put in my array list. So array list is a parametrized class, it's a gen generic class and um, with generic classes um, you need to specify the type of thing in these diamond brackets after the base type name. So I want this to be an array list of strings, so let's say here strings equals new array list and now here because I'm mentioning the base type again once again I need to mention the um, the uh, I need to give the type parameter here um, and now I can say strings dot add and let's add something different I'll add animals here so let's add cat and strings dot add dog and strings dot add uh, I don't know why but alligator springs to mind so let's add alligator and now um, the difference is when I do get I can say string um, animal I'll call it equals list dot get and let's get the first one again and just do sys out animal uh, sorry, not list.get, uh, I mean strings.get. So list was my first array list, and I want, this, I want this new one here. And now you notice that I'm not getting any kind of error, and indeed it works. There's dog there. And if you, if you hover the mouse over get, you can see that it returns a string. So because you've specified a type here, now um, methods that um, would have returned an object in the old style will now return objects of the appropriate type and that's that's uh, kind of all you need to know at the minimum about generics um, I want to mention a couple more things in this tutorial and then in the next tutorial we're going to look at how you pass uh, parameterized classes as arguments to methods because there are some um, interesting things you can do there that are perhaps worth knowing about but um, yeah, so like um, you can have um, parameterized classes that have more than one type argument, and I just want—I'm just going to really briefly show you an example um, that can be more than one type argument. I'm going to show you an example really briefly, but we'll not, I won't go into the details of how to use this class, and if you want the details check out my um, free videos on the collections framework but there's, um, there's a, um, a class called hashmap and hashmap is another parameterized class but it takes two type arguments so as an example I could say integer string like this uh, map equals new hash map integer string and the point that I want to make here is just that I'm not going to get any further into this, um, this this class right here, but if you've got more than one type parameter, I'll just add the import as well so that it compiles, then you just specify them separated by commas. Um, and some classes do, as you can see, uh, have more than one type parameter. And the other thing that I want to mention is something um, unique to Java 7 at the moment, although I believe Java 8 is on its way and maybe by the time you're looking at this tutorial maybe Java 8 is out but um, let's say Java 7 style Java 7 allows you to miss out the um, it, the kind of second type declaration so like with array list here we had to say array list string and then we had to repeat it there but in Java 7 you can say array list um, let's call this some list and let's put, let's parameterize this. I could say that this is an array list that stores integers. And by the way, this doesn't have to be um, some kind of standard Java class. This could be your own, um, your own class here that you've created. Uh, it's, may, it's maybe worth just illustrating that point really briefly. Let's declare a class up here, class animal. And I won't give it any implementation, but just for the hell of it down here, I want to say, I want to say this is going to store animal objects, so you can see that this works with any kind of um, 
any kind of class at all and I'm going to say here equals new array list but I'm just going to use the so-called diamond operator here uh, which is a pair of empty tight brackets and if you do that um, this list it will still be um, a list of um, animals but um, from Java 7 onwards Java will actually infer what kind of type of thing you want to put in your list if you declare a variable of the appropriate type and set it equal to a new um, a new um, parameterized class and just put these diamond brackets in so that's particularly useful with um, something that takes more than one type parameter or you may even you can even have like nested type parameters and that can get really messy because here you could have for example like I could have a map of um, a map of lists and then it's very handy just to be able to specify empty brackets like this and not have to repeat the whole convoluted nested um, parameterized diamond bracket thing there. So that's it for this tutorial and as I say if you only learn one thing about generics which you, you can you can get away with doing really because you don't need to use them that much then it's it's just this that you should really know um, and of course you, you can iterate through this array list with a four each with a four each loop which we covered in a tutorial on arrays but that's that's not to do with generics that's to do with lists really so um, at its basic level it's pretty simple just remember to repeat the type wherever you repeat the base name although you can miss it out for the second time in Java 7 and that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we're going to look at passing parameterized um, classes, parameterized objects I should say to methods um, because there's some complications there so join me again next time and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com and until next time, happy coding.